Welcome everyone. We're going to talk about why do services cluster downtown as we examine chapter 13, key issue one. I'm your host, Andrew Patterson. So we look at the CBD, the Central Business District. This is just downtown city areas. You think of Dallas, Chicago, New York City, Baltimore. These are very compact but large percentage of public business and consumer services are located in these areas. So of course, downtown is where you have tons of people, tons of businesses and services and automobiles. This, what you think of, is the central business district. Services locate there because of accessibility. That's where everything is. That's where all the people are. If you're going to be a service for you know, um, some lawyers, that's where you're going to need to locate. If you're going to be a restaurant, you're going to be there because there's people working down there. Everything is in the CBD. This is the easiest part of the city to reach because everything's located there and it's very central. It's the focal point of transportation because all hubs, all roads lead to the downtown portion of the city. Usually this is the oldest district, usually near the origin of the settlement where the town grew up from its old days into what has become a major city. And it's usually along a body of water or transportation route because there had to be a reason initially for that CBD to develop. There had to be a reason why that town developed there in the first place. So usually it's on a major thoroughfare like a road or what used to be a trailway for wagons or a railroad passing or on the water. So here's our look at wilkes Bear, Pennsylvania. This is the central business district. We can see the various business services surrounding the city center park. We can see consumer services all embedded here. Um, educational schools, um, some people, residential areas packed in there as well, and very limited parking here and there. But along this river in Pennsylvania, we've got the central business district where it's very dense and everything is packed in together. So public services in the central business district. We've got things like city hall, courts, state agencies, and libraries. These are all things that are funded publicly that are supposedly services that go out for all of the general public. We've also got places of worship like churches, temples, where, which historically grew as the town. Historically, they were planted there by founding members of the cities. Social service agencies, sports facilities like, you know, here we used to have the Dallas Cowboys much closer to downtown. Now they're way out in Arlington. Um, but other cities, like you think of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where you've got the Steelers downtown, you've got the Pittsburgh Pirates downtown. You think about Cleveland, where you have the Cleveland Indians, the baseball team, the Cleveland Cavaliers downtown. Um, so traditionally, you've got activities and sports and places of worship and public agencies right there downtown. And they've built convention centers because they want to bring populations in there to take advantage of all the services that are downtown. And this is a good way to, to raise money. This is a way they stimulate business for all the restaurants, bars, and hotels that are down there. Business services in the CBD. We've got advertising, banking, finance, journalism, and lawyers. They're located in proximity to those government offices and courts that we talked about previously in the public services. All of that's downtown, well, then you're going to want to have business to support all of that. If you are a, a, a business or an office that supports the legal process, like if you're an office supply company, you're going to want to be right there where everything's going on. And the reason that makes it beneficial is you're still utilizing personal relationships for face-to-face -face meetings. We're going to go to lunch with people who are working downtown so that we can build a relationship and we can get them to use our office supply company. Business services, they're very accessible to a variety of neighborhoods for various workers. For example, we've got top executives that live right there in the CBD. We've got junior executives all the way on down to people who might be performing secretarial duties, even custodians. Everybody's packed in to the CBD. Consumer services in the CBD. We've got retailers with a high threshold, meaning we've got department stores that are able to support the needs of lots of people in this dense area. But we've also got real retailers with a high range, meaning perhaps we've got specialty jewelry and clothing. Maybe we've got a Prada store downtown, 
people will drive a long way to come into the CBD because you're not going to have a Prada store on every corner. Like back in the suburbs, we, we generally don't have Prada, um, you know, way far out from the CBD. We keep Prada in a central location in the CBD because people, we know they'll drive a long way to access that clothing and buy it probably. And then you've got other retailers who exist there strictly to support the downtown workers, like restaurants, office supply stores, computer tech working agencies. Um, so if you have all these workers and you're a restaurant, it'd be great for you to be right there in the CBD because that's a bunch of people that are going to need to eat lunch. Things that we don't generally see in the central business, business district. Well, we've got a really high rent because there's not very much land because so many people and buildings and businesses and services are crammed in there. So we're going to see a lack of manufacturing in the central business district because manufacturing takes up a lot of space and we need a lot of cheap land to be able to make products affordably. So you're not going to see manufacturing. Larger ships that go along with manufacturing that used to be able to get into the harbors, well, now because things are so packed in and because our ships are being made bigger to carry more items, they, they can no longer fit into traditional harbors of the CBDs. And what we're really seeing as downtown is transferred from industry creating things to more commercial and more recreational. We're seeing much more parks and, and tourism that draws people downtown instead of workers to create products um, as far as industry is con concerned. The other thing is we have a lack of residents. People traditionally moved into the CBD for jobs like in the industry but as industry moved out looking for cheaper land people have done the same thing people have been pulled to the suburbs because they can buy more land and they can live cheaper and they can send their kids to better schools because when you have populations crammed into the CBD there's just too many people to support for the public system so as they move away they're buying you know single family homes with land when they have to mow their own land, but there they are, and they're taking, sending their kids to better schools. People are pushed out of the CBD because it's very high rent, very expensive, and you've got a lot of poverty and crime because as people traditionally moved into the CBD, they had work. Now that work is starting to move out of the CBD, or it has for some time, you've got people that can no longer afford jobs. The thing about it is, People who can't afford jobs that have residents in the CBD, it's difficult for them to move to the suburbs because how are they going to get there? Number one, they don't have a car. Number two, it's expensive to buy a house and live out in the suburbs. Because if you don't have a car, you can't really walk places in the suburbs. So you've got crime in the CBD because people have to find a way to live. So they're going to steal things. Perhaps they're going to sell and use drugs. We have seen some repopulation but there's still low population in the CBDs because nowadays there's a lack of consumer services like grocery stores. Like you think about it in the suburbs, we've got maybe a Walmart or Target and things like that on every corner, but in the CBD, land is so competitive and so expensive, we're not seeing lots of grocery stores. So if you're not able to walk down the street and, and buy some food, it's going to make it difficult to live there. So we've got a lot of competition for land in the central business district. Because it's so intense, it pushes things vertically, meaning we're going to have to expand upward or down below ground. So underground, we're, we see the utilization of spaces like garages, loading docks, lots of pipes. We send the sewage underground because above ground, people are walking around and we build skyscrapers up, but below ground, we've got to pack things in as much as we can. We've also got the subway underground and pedestrian pack passages where we cut tunnels for people to walk between buildings underneath the street and we sell real estate above the street so we can pack in more businesses and services. Skyscrapers. These were made possible in the 1880s by the um, implementation of the elevator and by the creation of steel which allowed for structures to stand taller and more strong without fear of bricks toppling over. We've got artificial lighting and air conditioning which makes being inside buildings during the hot summer much more enjoyable. Retail, 
pays very high rent for street space in this competition for land in the CBD. Because if you're a retailer, you want to be right there on the street so people can walk in and buy your stuff. So businesses, they're going to occupy traditionally more middle-level offices and skyscrapers because they're able to afford it. And then at the very top, we've got people who live on upper floors because there's less noise up there and you have great views. The problem we've got in the CBD is it's become kind of a food desert, meaning it's difficult to find healthy food. And if you look at Baltimore over here, all of these areas in the purple pink are food deserts, meaning there's nowhere to find food or at least nowhere to find healthy food. Like perhaps maybe there's a McDonald's sitting on a corner here, but for the most part, there's nowhere to get healthy food. So if you're living in the middle of this area here in Baltimore, you're going to have to walk a long way or take a taxi, which is expensive, to find food. So the distance in Baltimore to the market is more than half a mile. And that's only one time around the track. But if you think about it, if you're busy and you're trying to work and you're trying to support your family by working three jobs, you don't have time for that. So income, it's well below the poverty level in these areas because we don't own cars and there's not healthy food. What we've got, it's not a literal desert where it's sand but there's no food. You cannot purchase food in these areas. So that is a problem in the CBD.